Judges chapter 3. Now these are the nations which the Lord left. So God left them. They were supposed to utterly wipe them out, but they didn't do what God told them to do. So God said, I'll leave them. And we'll read about them in great times of David. Enemies. Because of the disobedience found in Judges. And we need to realize that when we disobey God today, and these judges are dead, these people are dead when David is fighting the Philistines, one of those nations that were to be wiped out. We'll see in a few in a few verses. That we may be dead and gone, but our sins may be still reaping and still going. And we need to get a hold of that. To prove Israel by them. Even as many of Israel as had not known all the wars of Canaan. Jo uh, that would have been Joshua. Only that the generations of the children of Israel might know. To teach them war. At the least should. Uh, at least such as before knew nothing thereof. They're going to have to learn war. Because the enemies had not been wiped out. You understand, if they would have had complete 100 obedience in God when they got in that land. And God says, you do everything I tell you to do, your enemies are going to flee. They're going to come in one way, they're going to flee out seven others. And the land would have complete rest. But that's not going to happen to the Lord Jesus Christ sits as king in Jerusalem. So they got to learn war. Name of the five lords of the Philistines. There's King Saul and King David. And all the Canaanites. And isn't it quite funny that one of the twelve of Jesus' disciples was spoken of the Canaanite. And I believe the man that they called to carry his cross was a Canaanite. I'm not sure about that one. They were supposed to be wiped out. And the Sidonians and the Hivites, they were supposed to be wiped out. That dwelt in Mount Lebanon. From Mount Baal. Baal. That's the big daddy of all the GODSs. What is Baal Hermon? That's a city given over to Baal. And like I said, a lot of the cities around the Bible area, around the times of Asia and uh the Middle East, there are towns and cities giving to one deity. Uz, where Abram came from, is a city that was given over to the moon goddess. And his symbol was the crescent moon. Now, you wouldn't find anything like that today, I guess. Of the Middle Easterns. Of Ishmael. Having a sign of their father, Abram. You wouldn't see anything like that, would you? And entering in Hamath. And they were to prove Israel by them. To know whether they would hearken unto the commandments of the Lord. Which he commanded their fathers by the hand of Moses. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. And then what Joshua wrote. Alright, so here we go. Let's go to Deuteronomy 20 verse 17. We'll get it again. Many a few times. Deuteronomy 20. Yeah, 2017. We got to read this before we read the next verse. Deuteronomy 20, verse 17. Uh, forgive me if I sneeze in my nose. Allergies down here in Florida. So Deuteronomy 20, verse 17. This multiple places, but this is what one I grab. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God has commanded thee. And when you look up the Hittites, the Amorites, the Canaanites, the Perizzites, the Hivites, the Jebusites, and you look up in a concordance, you find all those names and together in one place. It's other God says, you got to get rid of them. You're not to have unity with them. So what will Israel do? The Bible says utterly destroy. So now let's move to our next verse. 
Judges 3, 5. 5, the number of death. You're going to lay out the chap now the chapters and verse numbers were not in the original Bible. God didn't say, all right, Judges chapter 3, verse 1, verse 2. He didn't say that. That was added much later, but I'm telling you, these chapter and verse numbers, the Holy Spirit has something with it. As much as, as I'm studying right now and marking the first time a word shows up. This is God's book, and this book is designed by God. Yeah, man wrote it. But the Holy Spirit is the ink of the pen of the man. So verse 5, the children of Israel dwelt among the Canaanites. The Hittites, the Hittites, the Parasites, the Hittites, and Jebusites. And we only went to one verse. I mean, we, uh, we could spend this whole study on all the verses where God said, utterly destroy. And Judges chapter 3, verse 5, we're dwelling among them. Dwelling among and utterly destroy are not, are not the same. You know? It's like finding milk in a carton in your refrigerator and it's totally gone bad. There's a difference between throwing it out and taking a big gulp of it. Big difference. And they took their daughters to be their wives. Is that what God said to do? And gave their daughters to their sons and served their gods. Alright, two places here. Deuteronomy 7.3 Then Deuteronomy 7 the law. This is the Jewish law, Deuteronomy. You were supposed to obey the law. They said to God, we will obey your word. At Exodus 20, when they're at that mountain. And Moses came down and said, yeah, everything that God says we will do. So Deuteronomy 7.30, one of many places in the Bible. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. Thy daughter shall not be not <coughs> excuse me. Thy daughter thou shalt not give unto his son, nor his daughter shalt thou take unto thy son. For they will turn away thy son from following me. And they may serve other gods, so will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy thee suddenly. So now with what they've done, they've already made marriages with them. First Kings eleven. Verse one. Let's see if God be true. 1 Kings 11, 1. And God wrote this all before it happened because God knew it was going to happen. And man won't listen. So 1 Kings 11, 1. And what happens next after this king in the nation of Israel is just ripped into two pieces that has never gotten back yet. It will. But not now. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Gentile women. They're not Jewish. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh. Okay, that's okay, Egyptian. You weren't supposed to go to Egypt. Um, that's a no-no. That's in the scriptures. We can run that back. Women of the Moabites. You're not, you're not supposed to have anything to do with them. The Ammonites, the Edomites, the Zidonians. The Hittites, Hittites. Ooh, that's one of them nations there weren't supposed to be living. Of the nations concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, you shall not go in unto them. Gee, I wonder who they were. <laughs> you shall not go into them, neither shall thou, neither shall they come in unto you. For surely they will turn away your hearts. After their God, I think I think I read that somewhere. Solomon claimed unto these in love, and he had seven hundred wives, princes, and three hundred concubines, and his wives turned away his heart. For it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wives turned away his heart, exactly what Deuteronomy said, after other gods, and his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. And Solomon went after Ashtoreth. We talked about her last night. She's the queen of heaven, Mary. The future Mary would be. She's Astrid. The goddess of the Zidonians. And after milk of the goddess of the Amorites. And Solomon did evil in the sight of the Lord and went not fully after the Lord as David's father. And 
Then did Solomon build a high place to Chemish, the abomination of Moab, and the hill is before Jerusalem, and Moab, the abomination of Jerusalem. And likewise he did for all his strange wives, which burned incense and sacrificed unto their gods. And the Lord was angry with Solomon. That's exactly what we read. And it all begins in Judges 3, verse 5. Violate in Deuteronomy 20, 17 and 18, Deuteronomy 7, 3. And you got a king who has been turned away and serving other gods, exactly what God told Moses to write down. God knows. And we need to adhere to God. Verse 7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. And forget the Lord their God. Forget him. Jehovah, who's that? You know, Jesus Christ is almost forgotten out of America. The story of Jonah. Not only disbelieved, but almost forgotten out of it. You've got pirates and, and talking vegetables in Sunday school classes. Where do you see that in the Bible? How come a pirate? Pirate, I mean, aren't they... Wicked? They're... So they forgot the Lord their God. Forgot! And served Balaam, remember that's Baal, plural, his children, the stars. They would open up the newspaper in the morning and find out what their horoscope would say. They would, you know, check the chi, leaf, chi leaves and whatever they do that other stuff and look into the crystal ball. And so that's all that's there. And serve groves. Groves, like high places, have been associated with adulterous worship. The idol seems often to have been a sacred tree. We don't have no sacred trees around here, do we? Mm. Not in churches, do we? The figure of which is constantly found in Assyrian monuments. In apostate Israel, Israel, we talk about Israel. However, that such groves were associated with every form of idolatry and Ashtoreth. So, if you were to drive down streets of America and houses nice, not so nice, and you would see a woman out in the front yard. And around her is a shell, and usually trees or bushes. Or, that's a grove. Or if you were to go into an Asian home, and you got a wooden box with a face, wood in box, came from a tree. And inside that tree is a face of a person, God, or something. So here we see Asher, the queen of heaven already, still, early in Judges. Queen of heaven, long before a religion of worshiping the queen of heaven. No, it's here in Judges. And she has a grove. Catholics have groves in front of their houses, in front of their churches. Somewhere in every Catholic church there's a grove with Mary. You just got to go look for it, but they're there. And that goes back to Judges chapter 3. Therefore, let's see what happens. The anger of the Lord was hot against Israel. So your groves makes God angry. And it said trees. And it's quite interesting that I have been in Baptist churches that around the pulpit there are still artificial, but there are trees around the pulpit with a wooden box and a man that stands there and Sometimes in that church, that man is worship as a god. An idol. In a Baptist church. But we're in the Bible and we study the Bible and we do what the Bible says, but we're back in the time of Judges. Hopefully this will go out to some churches and it'll get right. I've seen churches with Christmas trees. I've seen them study Jeremiah, and I've seen them jump right over from chapter 9 to verse 11. 
Why would they skip ten? It was hot against Israel and sold them into the hand of Jesusidum. He knows his name, king of Mesopotamia. Mesopotamia. God sold them for having groves and marrying into false religions. And the children of Israel served Keshinim Rishazim eight years. Eight's a new beginning. The problem is by God. Did you get that? The people sin and God caused the problem. That's what evil is. What, what's the definition of evil? Oh, I can drink beer all my life. Oh, yeah, look at me. Look at me party. Look at the beer. And you go see the doctor and he says, you know what? Your liver is shot. Your liver being shot is the evil as a result from your sinning by drinking beer. You go sleep around with women. Or man go sleep or woman sleeps around with men. And you go to the doctor one day and he says, hey, you got to take this. You know, you got an STD. That STD is the evil from the result of you living carnally and wickedly. So when the Bible says the Lord make is evil, that's not the sin. That's the result of the sin. And when we see the evil in verse 8, it's because they sinned, God sent an enemy into them. Verse 9, the remedy comes by God, verse 9. Here's the disease, here's the disorder. Verse 9 is the remedy. And when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord, and the Lord raised up a deliverer, that's the first time that word shows up. Talk about pizza deliverer? What about God's a deliverer? What's the first deliverer in the, in the Bible? It's not pizza. It's the people who have sinned against God, being God's people, and God is merciful, God is tender, God is long-suffering, God is willing to show mercy that he will help those that sinned against them after he has done evil in their lives. And when you're going to get to Israel sinning and God sending an enemy, that is to show in our lives that maybe some of the problems we have with God is because of our sins, and God is loving and merciful to say, hey, I want your attention. Now, not always. Not all pain and suffering is because of your sin. It could be just the fact that the wages of sin is death, or you're an idiot. <laughs> I mean, if you chop off your arm, that's not because, you know, I've seen and all that. I can get... No, that's because you were stupid. Raise up and deliver the children of Israel who delivered them, even Othniel. Well, who's this guy? The son of Kenaz. Hey, who cares? Caleb's younger brother. Caleb shows up in Judges. Caleb's in Numbers, he's in Joshua, and he's in Judges, and all as a good refrain to the Scriptures. Never spoken evil. There he is. And his brother must be good. Yes, yeah. he's, he's a judge. He's, his, no, his brother's son is a judge. And the Spirit of the Lord. There's the Holy Spirit, capital S. It's going to work with this man. The third member of the Trinity is going to help Israel with this man. It said, came upon him. Notice it don't say came in him like, the, like a Christian. Came upon him. And he judged Israel. Now, can you imagine the nation of Israel walking up there? Judge not that she judge. Now, we think about that. And went out to war. I thought the Bible says, thou shalt not kill. With the Holy Spirit, this guy is making war. And the Lord delivered Kashereshadim, king of Mesopotamia, into his hand, and his hand prevailed against Kashereshadim. I guess you can say, you know, by studying the Bible, I've read every word of the Bible. I may not be able to pronounce it, but... And the land had rest 40 years, 40 years, a number of testing. 
And Nathaniel, the son of, <coughs> excuse me, Kenneth died. Let me get a little drink. So, that's the first judge. First judge, the first problem you get is Mesopotamia. Joshua was actually the first judge. Yeah, Joshua, you could say, but as far as the book of Judges, I mean, yeah, I mean, I would, I, I personally would put Joshua in there. And when you got the enemy here in the book of Judges is you got Mesopotamia, Israel sinned, they married. God said Mesopotamia. He had 40 years rest. You know, Judges is like that heart monitor. Boing, 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 all through the book. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Verse 7. And the Lord strengthened Eglon, the king of the Mo king of Moab, that's one of the ones they married, into Moab, against Israel. Now they're kin. Moab is the is the son of Lot, and I forget what he was to Abram. Nephew. Nephew. So there's a family relations there somewhere, but they're kin to Israel. Moab. Lot's daughter got her got her father drunk, and you can read in Genesis. So it wouldn't be surprised if Moab, you know, he's a wild, worldly kind of person. Because, why? Because they had done evil in the sight of the Lord. So there are some troubles in our life because God has seen that we have done evil. That is a possibility amongst other things. And he gathered unto him the children of Ammon, and Amalek, ooh, ooh, there's a bad name, Amalek, that's Esau, that's the one that came up to Israel behind and started killing people off, picking them off, that God got very angry with him, and God said, I'm going to wipe him off the world, and God told King Saul, I want you to go in there and wipe out Amalek, and King Saul spared the best and the king, we'll get to that, Lord willing. And went and smote Israel and possessed the city of palm trees at Jericho. I got Deuteronomy 34, 5, 34, 3, Deuteronomy 34, 3, and 2 Chronicles 28, 15, for that's being the city of palm trees. Which one? 2 Chronicles 28, 15. So the children of Israel served Eglon, the king of Moab, 18 years. It's a long time. 666. But when the children of Israel cried unto the Lord after 18 years. So see, Judges is not, okay, one chapter, one day, we're done, four chapter, we're done, four day, fifth chapter, five days. Between verses 11 and verse 12, there's 40 years. And between 14 and 15, there's 18 years. Cried unto the Lord, the Lord raised up them a deliverer, Ehud, the son of Gera, a Benjaminite. That's the other son of Rachel when she dies. A man left-handed. Benjamin, Benjaminites are known for being left-handed and very skilled with their left hand. And by him the children of Israel sent a present unto Eglon, the king of Moab. Ehud, you bring this king a present for us. Doesn't say why, but, but Ehud made him a dagger. First time dagger shows up. Which had two edges, and you've seen them. Of a cubic length. That is some dagger. Now the standard of a cubic is from 
the tip of your finger stretched out to your elbow. That's what they say standard. That's a dagger? That to me, that's a sword. I don't know what a sword is if that is a dagger a cubic length. And he did gird it under his raiment upon his right thigh. So you can swing over with his left hand, grab that thing, we'll jewel. And he brought the present unto Eglon, king of Moab. And Eglon was a very fat man. <laughs> Look at the Bible put that in there. Come on, God, you can't tell us exactly when Jesus Christ was born. No, you got to tell us about a king of Moab is a very fat man. Really? There's some other things in the Bible I'd like to know. I don't need to know about this fat guy. But there he is. The Bible says Eli was a fat guy. And he called him fat. Now, I guarantee that's changed today's in the wimpy, I am offended Bibles. Yeah. Probably very obtuse. That's why they hate God, because God is, hey, he's fat. And I never get in trouble with this for calling someone fat, it's Bible, fat man. The Holy Spirit, inspiration. Remember, verse 10. That is cruel, I mean, I wouldn't do it cruelly, but you know. And when he had made an end to offering the present, here's your present, you know, I'm opening, oh God, so true, I don't whatever it was, he sent away the people that bear the present. So there are people who came with him and there are people with Eglon. They send them all away. Yeah, yeah, party's over. But he himself turned again from the quarries that were in Gilgal and said, I have a secret errand unto thee. Ooh, watch out for secrets. Okay. I, I'm not, I'm, I'm only up to right now okay who said keep silent Shh. don't tell anybody what we do in our business here don't tell them about the different ranks and all that you guys enjoy don't tell them who, who's giving the gift to which women in this Baptist church and all oh, that stood by him went out from him. everybody leaves the room but these two and he came unto him and he was sitting in the summer parlor which he had for himself alone and he who said I have a message from God unto thee and he rose out of his seat and he who put forth his left hand took the dagger from his right thigh and thrust it into his belly Ooh. And the half also went in after the blade. That's that part, you know, it keeps your hand from going down and cutting yourself on the blade. It, he, he, he put that thing over a cubic more into that guy's belly, the fat belly. Man, he, he had some power. That thing was sharp. And it probably also stuck out of him. And the fat. So when when God said fat over here is a very fat man, he use he's not using it as you know making fun of the guy. That fat man is to tell us the finish of the story. This guy was so fat. Now what about Eli? That guy was just fat off the ministry. He ought not have been fat. He's supposed to be walking up and down and doing all the service, but he's fat. The fat clothes upon the blade. So he jabs him in the stomach, and here's his big belly, and just overtakes the blade. So he could not draw the dagger, the dagger out of his belly. He lost his dagger in this fat man. And the dirt came out. And what that expression is that it went through his intestines. And it was so fierce and so strong that, uh, which way? I lost it. Eglon, his body reacted to that hole in his stomach as if he was going potty out his stomach. 
emptied the stomach and the intestines out of the stomach through the hole. So it was a forceful, violent death. Then Ehaw went forth through the porch and shut the doors of the parlor upon him and locked them. Because remember, there's only these two alone, no one else. And when he was gone out, his servants came. And when they saw that, behold, the doors of the parlor were locked. That's almost like unusual. That's not something he did. They say, surely he covereth his feet in his summer chamber. All right. The only time he locked the door is when he goes into his summer chamber, his summer room, and he's covering his feet. 1 Samuel 24, 3. 1 Samuel 24, 3. Now, some people I've heard say he's going potty. First Samuel 24, 3. And he came to the sheep colts. That's where they kept the, the sheep, by the way. The little pens for sheep. So they don't run off. Where was a cave? And Saul went in to cover his feet. Again, some people say it's potty. And David and his men remained in the sides of the cave. And the men of David said unto him, Behold, the day of which the Lord said unto thee, Behold, I will deliver thy enemy to thy hand, that thou mayest do to him as it shall seem good unto thee. Now how loud are they saying this? There is King Saul. Now, if he's going potty, and I don't know because you read it, they're whispering. Then David rose and cut off the skirt, oh man, of Saul. Saul's wearing a skirt. Rose trivially. And it came to pass after that David's heart smote him because he cut off Saul's skirt. If he was going potty, that skirt, you know, is lying there, and David took a piece of it. I don't know, but there, there are three things: he's napping, resting, or like I said, some people say he's going potty. Cover his feet means you drop all your drawers as you're sitting at a toilet and you, your clothes are at your feet. It can be re reasonable. So there's three possibilities. He's snapping, resting, or potty. It's interesting. And it's weird that he, they say, you know, the only time he ever locks the door when he's covering his feet. Possibility. And they tarry till they were ashamed. He's not coming out. And behold, he opened not the doors of the parlor. Therefore they took a key. Oh, how okay is that? They took a key to open a lock. And open them. And behold, their Lord was fallen down dead on the earth. He's dead. And he who escaped while they tarried, <laughs> he's gone. And passed beyond the quarries and escaped unto Syria. And it came to pass when he was come that he blew a trumpet in Mount Ephraim. So he's in Israel. It's in the proper side of Israel. And the children of Israel went down with him from the mount, and he before them got an army. And he said, to Follow after me. For the Lord has delivered your enemies, the Moabites, into your hand. And they went down after him and took the fords. And that's a place by where you can pass a river. It's shallow enough that you can cross over. 
toward Moab and suffered not a man to pass over. Now notice the Jordan did not dry up for them here. Yes, they found the shallow place and they walked across. Probably well-known place to cross. And they slew of Moab at that time about 10,000 men. All lusty. Run back and find out the relationship and the, and the, and the way of Moab and his father and mother. And all men of valor, who they did have high-ranking soldiers, and they escaped not a man. So Moab was subdued that day under the hand of Israel. And the, rest, and the land had rest fourscore, that's 80 years. Between 30 and 31, 80 years. That's the second judge. Now, you want to count three if you want to count Joshua. Now, I don't know here. It's just verse 31. Not much said, but... And after him, the third judge was Shimgar, the son of Anna, which slew of the Philistines 600 men with an ox gold. And that's a pointed stick used to you know get the animals in line and count. The animals. It's a marker. It's a you're going the wrong way. It'd be sharp. And he also delivered Israel. That's weird. That's it. That's all the information we're giving with him. The third one. Now why I'm going to excuse is because this is the third judge and there's not much said about him. And yet the Holy Spirit is not much said about him. The second judge, he's got this sword, kind of dagger kind of thing, and he uses it to kill the enemy, Jesus Christ. Then you got Othniel. He just makes war and gets the victory of God. But again, like I said, Joshua, that's a typology. Joshua, I would fit to be in there. Now, notice here, starting these judges. You got Othniel, he's against Mesopotamia and his outright war. You got Ehud, and he's got a dagger, and he's fighting Moab. You got Shemgar. He's got an ox gold. And he's fighting the Philistines. You're going to see with these judges, you're going to see some weird instruments of battle used by God. And it'd be quite interesting to write their names down, who they are against, and they'll be the enemies of Israel, and then what weapon is used by them. And you find it in television. Old West, choose your weapon. Judges. Judges. 